as Telson here and this is the first video in a series of training videos to show you uh, how to use a polyboard. This is the quick start video just to give you the quick overview and build of your first basic cabinet. So here we are in polyboard as it started off. Let's go into simple steps for building a cabinet. The first thing we want to do is click here um, we got a new cabinet button here. This can also be accessed, all the buttons can be accessed also via the menus which are at the top here. So if we go into file and new cabinet it's exactly the same as if we click the new cabinet button here. Um, we have a language button here so make sure that you're using the language that is you're, you're familiar with. And let's just click the new cabinet button. We have the new cabinet dialog box and for this exercise, let's just start a very simple box-shaped cabinet. Other box, other shapes are possible. We'll look at those in other videos. Click on OK, and the box-shaped cabinet appears on the screen with the layout, the, the default layout of the screen. Default layout of the screen here is an isometric view in the middle, um, an elevation, a plan, and a left view on the left-hand side which we can move these around. I suggest you don't move these at all. Just leave them as they are. And on the right hand side, the properties of the cabinet. In the properties of the cabinet, the default cabinet, we can have, we have the name here, default cabinet. And if you click on the list, we have all the elements that make up this basic default cabinet. A top, a bottom, a left side, a right side, a back, a frontage. Underneath that, we have the sizes of the cabinet. These are the overall sizes of the cabinet which we can modify at will. So if we click onto one of the sizes here, height, and we say we have a definite, we have a height here of one meter 80, but we only want it one meter 20. I just put in one meter 20 and the cabinet is resized. So the quality board is a parametric program where we'll be designing, just typing in different sizes. Same goes in here for the width and the same goes in for the depth. Another depth, for instance, let's put 450 just to see. 450. You type the the dimension in that you need, and when you click out of the out of the box, the the the, the cabinet is resized. We here have here two options here in the dimensions: the height. I open this height at upper strip and the ele elevation of the plinth. These options we're looking are more detailed options. And we will look into these options late in another in another video, video later. Sorry. We have here the panels, and so each panel, if I click here, we can say we want a top or we don't want a top. Now, Polyboard will be working a lot with um, Polyboard will be working a lot with drop-down lists. If you see in a, uh, a parameter a drop-down list appear. You click on the arrow and you can have yes a top or no a top. If I put no a top, the top will actually disappear. You can see the top here has disappeared. Let's leave the top for the time being, yes a top. The same goes for the bottom, back, left side. And we also have here at the bottom here of the list, the price. This is the price which is calculated according to all the different information we've put into the materials and the, um, and the different uh, assembly details which we've given a price to, which would make up the cabinet. This cabinet being a basic cabinet, we can look at it in 3D. If we go click here on the 3D view button, we can also type in control space, space, or use menu 3D, 3D view. It's always the same. And we have then the cabinet will appear in a textured 3D view. We can swing around using the mouse very simply. We can use in this menu here, in this um, window here, this is the, the view window, 3D view window, the cabinet comes up as textured. We can also ask several different other types of different views. We can ask with a uh, an X-ray view. Um, this can either be a perspective or an isometric. We can turn on or off the lights and shadows here. and we can open or close doors and various other things, which we will be able to see in other videos too. Let's not worry too much about that for the time being. 
for the time being, let's just continue do, making our cabinet and using some of the basic commands. Once the cabinet is in place, it's when we move the mouse around the work area, here we have the what I call the edit window, where we can edit the cabinet. We move it around. If I click outside the work at the cabinet, I have this menu here of the overall cabinet parameters. If I click inside the cabinet, you note that the or within without clicking, the ins I move the mouse inside, we get a blue volume which appears. And if I click inside, the blue volume gets darker, and Polyboard shows us the different sizes inside. And what we've actually done here is we've selected the volume of the cabinet. And the inside volume of the cabinet, Polyboard has given us the length of the size of the inside dimensions. When the volume is selected, after having clicked into it and it becomes darker blue, we can see the parameters also of the volume which are out here. These can't be changed because the volume is determined by the outer, the outer dimensions of the cabinet and not directly. But let's do a few things with the with the um, with the volume. Now polyboard works mainly with the volume themselves. We can manage, we can we can sort you know, cut up a volume. Uh, let's cut up this volume. Let's cut this volume by adding things into it. Let's cut. Let's cut it into two already by adding an upright. Um, to add an upright, I just go into the volume and I click right with my mouse. Click on the right. We can do the same thing once the volume is selected by going in the modify and add an upright. Once the upright, um, you clicked upright in the menu. You can choose the type of upright, uh, how many you want, um, how you position the upright. Um, in fact, it, this upright is actually a vertical separation or division. We can proportionally put it in the middle, 50-50%, 50%. Uh, we can give it a distance from the left. Say we, want it, we need it at 500 millimeters from the left. And once we click OK, the upright is put in. Let's have a look in 3D. I'm going to give it more, less light. Click back into the 2D, the um, edit window. Now the upright is put in. We can put in, if we go in, now we see that the, um, that the cabinet is now divided into two volumes. There's one volume on the right and one volume on the left. We can see what the upright is in. It is actually green. If I click outside, we go back um, on the properties window to the general properties of the cabinet. If I click in this side now, uh, I select this volume and I get the general dimensions of the inside volume. If I click on this side, I'll get the, the dimensions of this volume. If I click on the right on the edge of one of the uh, parts of the cabinet the part will actually go green. If I click on it, it will go darker green, and I will get the actual parameters of the part. Here we have different part. This part is called the vertical division one, uh, and it has it, that's its name, and its type, and we have here the way it's positioned. So we can change its position here directly from the parameters. If I say I now want it 600 millimeters from the left-hand side, I can move it to 600 millimeters. If I move it, if I give it a fixed distance from the right-hand side, 800 millimeters from the right-hand side, we know that this distance now becomes 800. If we click onto the volume, we can see 800. I click onto the, and I can see also the what we're here in the section of the cutting list section, we have the, the structure. We'll look into the structure of things of a, of a panel later on. Let's have its material, which we've, picked, which we've taken out of the materials library, and its height and width, which are calculated automatically from the other uh, sizes of the cabinet. We also have the links section of the properties window. The links section tells us how this particular part is going to assemble to the different parts that it's in relationship to. 
So for instance, the top. How is it? Is? If we click on the top, if I click open the top list, in the top list we have the way it interacts with the top. Let's zoom in the top here. Let's select it here. And let's have a look at the way it re interacts with the top. We have priority to the top. Does it go under the top or is it going over the top? For the time being, it's what they call underpassing, which is means it's going underneath the top. If I put it overpassing, we, we decide that it actually cuts through the top. Let's keep it underpassing for the time being. Type. We have several types here. If I click on the type, I have a drop down list. I can recess it, which is just say it's just touching the top. I can groove it. In which case, if I groove it, I can give a depth to the groove. And I can say that it goes into the top 10 millimeters. And we can see automatically it's updated. The panel is updated. It is now grooved into the top 10 millimeters. I can say that this has an edging. The panel itself, we have to calculate it with using an edging of which is in the library of the edges library. Perpendicular, this is another, this is a parameter we will see for other types of panels. And links, fitting links, is what are the assembly details for assembling this particular panel, the separating panel, to the top. We can look at, we'll be looking into the fitting links, which are in fact hardware. Uh, in another video later on. Let's not get too complicated for the time being and this is just to show you roughly an overview of the of different properties. The same goes for all the other different parts. Let's put this uh, groove, we'll, 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 we'll call it a groove, let's call it a recess and the recess will be just butt jointed up to the top. We can give, um, we can say that this recess, has, we can give it a parameter of, um, it could be more or less it can be more or less touching the top, so it'd be on the top would be zero, or it can be um, minus ten. I think it does take minus, it won't die minus ten. No. It will only do zero, or it can be backed away from the top. But in general, we'll just use zero. Right, let's leave it as let's zoom out again. So every time we add a part, the part can be selected individually, and we can change its properties. Now, let's just add a few more elements into the into the cabinet. Let's click here. We will click here, and when it goes blue, I will right click the mouse and add shelves. If I just take add shelves, we have the add shelves box dialog box. Let's um, put in uh, let's say put in four shelves. Let's just put in OK. It separated the distance out four shelves, and we have four shelves in here, Sep and with an equal distance between each a shelf. And we'll notice that each shelf gives, in fact, a volume, a separate volume. An individual shelf. Now we can take we can take an individual shelf off. If we click here onto this shelf, and I click, having selected it green, I click right, and I say delete. And I valid. I deleted that one shelf and have created a different volume on the top and the bottom. Let's make this particular volume, let's add something else to this particular volume. Let's add some doors. Once in the volume I click right on the, on the mouse and I add a door. Here we have different types of doors that we can add. Let's add a double door. I click double door. I apply it globally, that means on the outside. And let's just click OK. And we have a double door. Click cabinet 3D view. If I twist this around now, we have built the cabinet with a door. This button here will open the door and close the door. Let's go back into the edit window. Into the edit window. And let's work on this volume here. I click in this volume and I click right with the mouse. And this volume, let's add some shelves. No, let's add some drawers. Drawers. Um, let's add a number of drawers here. Let's put in four drawers. And let's have a look at the assembly details of the drawers. I click here on assembly. 
in this window I can say what I have what I need in the draw. Uh, counter frontage being a facade board with a draw built behind it. Let's add a facade draw. Do I want sides? In this particular case, I'm going to ask for putting in sides. If we have, if we um, ma don't manufacture our own sides, we buy them already. We don't need sides. The same thing goes for the door back and the door bottom. We can buy. You can buy manufactured drawers, and these are not things that you're going to manufacture yourself, and you'll just have specific sizes. Whereas in, in this case, we're going to make them ourselves. Here we have different parameters of the draw, which are very explicit. Distance of the draw top, um, distance from the top, um, and distance from the bottom, and the, and the lateral play, and the top and bottom play. Let's just click OK for the. And Polyboard automatically calculates the positioning of the drawers. Let's go into the bit of furniture as it appears now. And here we have the drawers. And what's important to know is that Polyboard, each, indivi each individual item can be um, changed by itself. For instance, the drawers, if I click on, when I click on the drawers, I have the drawers properties menu here. If I say, let's change the drawer 1, I click on drawer 1, which selects the drawer 1. If I open the drawer 1's properties, I can see what material this is made in. I can see its height, its width and thickness, but these I can't change because they are calculated from the overall dimensions. Um, I can see, though, the way the drawers are linking, the, all the drawers are linking to the, uh, the top and the back. So I can say, for instance, I need some play at the top. For the time being, if I look at my drawers, we can see that the drawers are actually flush with the top panel, at the outer edge of the top panel. If I say from the top we need some play, and let's say we need 5mm play from the top, and let's say we need the same thing from the bottom, 5 millimeter play at the bottom and on the left side too 5 millimeter play and the vertical division 5 millimeter play if I now look on the 3D view I can see clearly the doors have been redimensioned to leave 5 millimeters from the edge of the board. So that's very quickly how to set up a, a, a little cupboard in Polyboard. So I hope that's been interesting for you and I suggest that you follow through and try to do the same thing for yourself and play around with polyboard and you'll see that it's when you get used to it it's very simple and